Hello everyone, this is another episode, another episode of what? To debate.net. I am Sebastian, and today, again, and always, the same co-host of this podcast. Are you bored of me? Duck. It sounds like you're what? being bored looking always at the same uh, um, co-host. I can wear, wear a, I don't know, well, fake hair not or... not exactly blonde, and you don't have the attributes which I usually seek in my co-hosts. Um, because everyone knows I have multiple podcasts. Yeah, how many podcasts uh, do you have? Tell me more about it. No one except this one. <laughs> so, Secret anyway, podcasts. You, you only record and, for yourself. Uh, yeah, that's probably it. Actually, today's debate is very on purpose. It's very on to the point, isn't it? The use of fake profiles is unethical, whether it's on online dating websites or whatever, I guess, whatever website. And, and bots, I right? will be defending the motion that it is unethical to use fake profiles or chat bots and the like and you will be against the motion that's the flip of the coin that has decided that yeah wonderful i look forward to that debate and i especially look forward to hear the argument where you put the sex in there that's the word you showed me mm, on the camera just stay now. tuned our dear listeners i have juicy <laughs> arguments as to why it's unethical <laughs> to use be careful I, I don't want to have to beep too much out of your argument so beep come on we're not americans we're publishing this in the in europe we can say whatever we and want, in america we? and maybe you know maybe our listeners are not uh well so accustomed accustomed to swear words oh. maybe we should do one of these these uh you know warnings so dear listener today's episode could have some profanity coming from sebastian baked in so be careful oh, we have I, puritan listeners yeah, i oh, i know we don't but uh maybe maybe they listen that to that in the car and have the kids on the back seat or something like that you know there, there are there are legitimate reasons and the fcc also is against those seven magical words you're not supposed to say on the on the radio so again seven magical words uh, I'm not. I'm not what saying that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying that. <laughs> it's wonderful it's words. What, you know all bomb? of them. <laughs> bomb. Do not say the word bomb if you're in a plane. Yeah. Yeah. And if so you're listening to this podcast, and not say bomb. Is that one of the seven words? That's one of the seven words. And I would say, I would, I would suggest to the listener that they skip over your arguments and just l listen to my clean arguments, and then, well, what the heck? What the heck? You just told me you had no arguments for today's debate, and now we should listen to no arguments instead of my my juicy arguments, my juicy and sexy arguments. Come on! <laughs> I think we should get started because now I really want to know what I have to cut out later. Okay, let's get started then. Let's do this, and I will start this debate. Okay, let's do this. Sebastian goes first and argues for the motion. So let's explain what a fake profile is. When you're on a dating website, you're a guy and you're chatting up to someone, a woman, and then you realize or you don't realize that that woman is fake. It's either another guy, an employee of the business, of the application, or just a chatbot, just a robot talking to you. So obviously it's a scam. And the reason why it's dangerous and even bothering me and others, it should, and sometimes uh, the chatbot or that fake profile was try to extract money from you. So if that's not an ethical, I don't know what is. The second thing, it's, it's also a lame growth tactic. Now, it's not because it may not be illegal, which maybe it is, by the way, in some cases. But you're basically tricking investors or people who believe in your company that you do have more users than you actually have. So you're actually probably hiding major design flaws if you can't get users to your dating application, for instance. Uh, my third argument is that it's probably psychologically disturbing for people to even knowingly know con that they're conversing with either robots or fake or um, uninterested third, third parties, because it seems that some part, sometimes men, because usually men are the targets of that, uh, do realize that they're talking to a fake profile and I wonder about the psychological damage that this potentially can create after talking to a fake or a robot for, I don't know, many days, months, years. I mean, if you've seen the the, the film Her, it's great if uh, that fake profile looks like Scarlett Johansson. But um, if not, then it's maybe not worth it. Uh, and finally, as I said, an ethical doesn't mean it's illegal. 
as such, it's just very sad. And uh, you're basically tricking humans. And I want to live in a world that is kind, that is not unethical, that is not horrible, where people are actually genuine and sincere. This is all about love, isn't it? Thank you. This is why I'm against, uh, sorry, this is why I'm for the motion that the use of fake profiles is unethical. Next up, Dirk. Let's hear his argument against the motion. So, the use of online dating apps uh, is not unethical. I'm pretty sure there are people that would disagree even with that. So the first question is, where do you draw a line between ethical and unethical? And I personally would draw the line in two ways. One way is, um, is the bot and the fake profile designed to extract money, for, uh, money from you? That, that is clearly unethical, but that's not the fake profile or the bot that's unethical then or the use of it. It's actually the business practice behind that. I would say there are services where no one really expects to meet people. They want to have a, a, a fun online experience. They want to have uh, juicy, sexy interactions with someone they believe in. It's all made up right from the start. And even to put one thing on top of that, I would argue that most people conduct the same unethical behavior by putting out fake profiles about themselves. So if you go to the web page of uh, your favorite online dating service, pretty much no, n not a single one of those pictures and profiles depict the real person. The, otherwise, you have only people who, who have hobbies like learning languages, reading fine literature, traveling a lot and eating high-class food uh, while they converse about today's politics and, uh, and uh, society or whatever you want to make up here. Um, so all of these profiles are more or less uh, made up to some degree. And it's not, not an ethical uh, problem at all. So my argument would be, it depends on what you're trying to do with those fake profiles. If it's for entertaining purposes, if it's for keeping up a service that's not depending on interpersonal real interactions, maybe it's okay. Maybe it's not a problem at all. So it depends on the business and it depends on uh, what those fake profiles and bots really do. Now it's Sebastian's turn. Let's hear his rebuttal. Dirk, are you saying that I'm using, I'm not using my own photos for my own profiles online? Really? I mean, come on. Yes, I know some people do that. But the problem is that people do not know that they are being tricked. That's what we're talking about. If they know, if they're actually paying for such a service of having uh, a robot to talk to them, then they can go and use my service. I'm actually building my own chatbot. This is coming up soon. So for all the women out there interested, you can talk to me. Uh, you will not see the difference between my chat bot and my personal profile. Anyway, back to my real arguments. The thing is, once you discover that you've been tricked, what happens? Most of the time, let's be honest, you get annoyed. You get annoyed, it puts you in a bad mood. And I think it encourages people to be fake by being tricked and by being realizing that this is all a, a game. I think it does not put you in a very good mood and that's why it's unethical because you're not trying to instill a positive and good culture in that dating arena. I mean, imagine like you're a straight guy and you're talking to another guy without knowing it because you think you're talking to another woman. I mean, this is a massive turn off. So come on, we want the real thing. We don't want to have like this illusion of whatever, affection, tenderness leading to nothing at all. So I mean, maybe, maybe my mind will, my opinion will change over time, especially if I remain single forever and ever and ever and then ever. Um, I want the real deal, the real thing. I'm not a chat bot. Uh, this is a real argument, by the way. See, I'm real. It's not a scam. So in summary, if you know that you're paying for a service where you're talking to a robot, I'm fine with that. The point is, if it's fake, you don't know that it's fake. You're being tricked into that system. So you're trying to be get money extracted from you. You're trying to be, if you're an investor, you're trying to be fooled into thinking that the uh, application, the startup has more users than they actually have. And even if you don't count for these fake profiles, the real profiles interacting with those fake profiles are fooled into thinking you're talking to a real person. So it's actually not exactly a very useful service either. So yes, overall, it's really unethical. It's 
harmful, I would say, even psychologically, it's useless because in the end, we want real affection. You want to feel the skin of someone else. You want to touch them. You want to feel them. All you need is love. Now, it's Dirk's turn. You made several points yourself. One point you made is there's a difference for what you're signing up for. So if you're signing up for a service that's not necessarily guaranteeing you to meet someone real, then maybe then it's ethical. So let's say people call a phone line. Um, there are telephone sex lines, as you know. And there's a sexy, erotic voice uh, telling you all, all the things you want to hear and uh, tons of things that, uh, that make you hot sitting somewhere in with a headset on maybe ironing next to while they while they talk to you that's fake yet you pay for that illusion and i would argue depending on the service you sign up for you pay for the illusion of being desired by many uh well humans of the same or the opposite sex whatever you're into and uh, a sex bot or a fake profile or a chat bot can provide that illusion and if you signed up for these kind of things maybe that's worthwhile then second point most online dating services get better and higher hit rates if you're interacting more with them so it stands to argue that you would interact less with an online dating service if you get the impression there is not enough interest and there are not enough folks uh, of uh, your desired orientation in that service. So you could make an argument that by providing you an experience through chatbots or through fake profiles, you're actually interacting more with the online service and therefore you have a higher chance of, of meeting the real profiles and therefore you have a higher chance of going on a date, meeting real people. And that's the, the point where you really discover if someone is real or fake because most online services provide you with a date at some point if it's a dating service. So um, and, and that's, that's the litmus test. When you walk out the door and you meet someone, then it's clearly not a chatbot. Having more interaction with people that brings you more to the service makes it more likely to meet someone, makes it more likely that you get the real skin that you desire so heavily. And therefore, maybe it's not unethical to give you that opportunity. So to conclude... Whether or not it's unethical really depends on whether or not you've been tricked into something. You said that, and I agree with that. Although, I would say, you're usually not really tricked into what you claim you've been tricked into. So people are engaging with an online service. It's all virtualized. They lie about themselves, and uh, they expect others that interact with them to lie as well. That's a common denominator in these services. So I think it's not that big a deal if there are a few fake profiles and a few chatbots in between them, as long as the overall service in the end provides you the experience you desire. Final statements. Sebastian goes first. No, Dirk, I do not know what sex lines you're talking about. I am sorry, I'm not using the services. In fact, when I have used dating websites in the in the past, I found it actually pretty boring, even real with real people. So, yeah, maybe you have a point. Maybe I should just talk to robots. Um, interacting more, uh, the, you say that it would be more likely to interact more afterwards. Honestly, it's so exhausting to really talk to other humans and then just start and explain again and again who you are. You, you really want to do this to a fake profile? Come on, it's exhausting. Like you, you just lose patience in doing this to real people afterwards. So it's actually damaging your ability and your patience to talk to fellow human beings afterwards. And I'm, I took this from experience. Uh, I get so exhausted that that's the reason why I'm building my own chatbot. So my chatbot can talk to other fake profiles and I'm not wasting my time. And if it's talking to a real human, they will not detect that I'm not real and I'll just collect them afterwards and give them and spread my love to them afterwards because i'm not here to scam them and you know take away the money from them that's it it's unethical to use fake profiles of course you're convinced thank you for listening Dirk. a chatbot that's there to extract your money that's clearly unethical 
That's not what we discuss. We discuss if it's generally okay and ethical to have fake profiles and chatbots in online dating apps. My point would be that it depends what you're, you're signing up for and what those fake profiles and bots are doing. Main reason, everyone lies. Everybody lies in these forums, in these apps. Um, and if at least a bot and fake profile provides you with the experience you seek in there and maybe even raise the probability that you meet real people because you hang out more there, find the real profiles between those fake ones, might be even worth it. But there are plenty of services that are not even there to provide you with the real deal. They are there to entertain your fantasies. And in these cases, you can make an argument that it doesn't matter if you entertain the fantasy with a real being or with a bot or with a fake profile. So in conclusion, no, it's not unethical. It's fishy at best, and it should be up to everyone to decide for themselves. And I think people who run those services should need to, should be required to actually state in their uh, terms of use what they are providing as a service. <laughs> So that's it. Yeah, we're done with today's debate. Um, I think Sebastian is still single. So if you want to call him, his number is... No, I don't have your telephone number. But uh, um, well, we always take anyone. messages. You can tweet at us. You can. I, I, I heard that you're reacting very positively to five-star ratings on iTunes. Yeah, I do, actually. I forgot about that. Yeah, it's yeah. good to our <laughs> iTunes page of To Debate. And you can rate I, us. And I don't Any even rating. care. If, I don't even care if you're fake or real deal, <laughs> as long as you give us a five star rating. Is that <laughs> that what we are saying, right? I'll be nicer than you. Just give us any rating. Tell us what you think. Yes, yes, that's true. Um, also, uh, we like to know who won the debate. So go to our page, please, and click on the little thumbs up, thumbs down icon on the episode, and just state your opinion. Also, we want to learn what arguments we could have used, what arguments won you off over, if any, what arguments you feel had more weight than others. Let us know in the comments of the blog, in Facebook, in you name it, we are everywhere. Just look for it to debate and you'll find our social media outlets. Cool. And Thank you for listening and stay tuned for our next episode in just a week or in two weeks, depending on our publication schedule. Yeah, and done real or fake or whatever. <laughs> Take care. Bye. That was fun. Surprisingly so. I was expecting that to be much less fun. I'm clearly not signed up on any online dating app right now, so that's where well, yeah, that's, that's the point. I thought you say officially to the Yeah, recording. you know, no, I you know, I call sex hotlines <laughs> apparently. That's what I said in the recording. <laughs> you also said you also said that everyone lies, which I did not say. So when you say you're when you say you're not on these websites, I leave it to your conscience. Yeah. I'm not here to judge. But on those web pages, everybody lies. And Facebook, everybody lies. So people, people, I don't lie, I'm honest. people I, hand out people a filtered I'm version honest. of themselves, and they don't use the latest picture of themselves. They don't uh, update the selfie to the version they just made in the morning. Uh, in the, <laughs> they they try to look at their best, and that's let's say a distortion of reality. I look, in photos. I look better in real life. So how many? My photos are crappy. So how many? How many people reach out? Oh, fake bots reach out to you then on those online dating apps? Uh, I'm not counting the number of fake profiles and cam girls and dog. Oh, insane. It's a disaster. Okay. I'm going to do this first and this. And then this. Okay. And this. And then, and then I'll just improvise. Just <laughs> let's. <laughs> I didn't prepare it. But I like, I like how, you, how you, how you fake that you have arguments. I've got to do this and this and then and here and uh, it, it, 
just holding up stuff that I couldn't possibly read because uh, your handwriting is terrible. Uh, it's not really convincing me that there's anything in there. Yeah, that could be call mom, buy milk. And now, you, what, what, what is that? Uh, do, I, do I read the word sex here? And exactly, <laughs> you read it. Exactly. Now you're interested. Now you're Now you're gonna... <laughs> now you're gonna you're gonna, <laughs> now you're you're curious aren't you now you want to have the debate see yeah fake arguments fake arguments yeah of no. course fake arguments as always as always I'm good okay, in audio editing. I make fake arguments. I, I cut in your argument about dictatorship into the episode about online fake profiles. Let's see how that gets together. That is so wrong. That is so unethical. Okay, my turn. Three minutes. Love. Da, 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 da. Oh, now you're taking the microphone like Frank Sinatra. Do I get my uh, song performance now? <laughs> I am not going to sing. I do have a singing project, but if I sing, the windows in this room will probably break. Um, <laughs> no, that, your voice is not high enough. I have to disappoint you. I'm sorry. What is it? Your voice is not high enough. I have to disappoint you. I'm sorry. No, no, no. It's not that it's high pitched enough. The problem is it's horrible that the windows would not even, like, in their own conscience, will actually break because it's so terrible. I can't even stand my own voice in the shower. Oh. I mean, this is, this is, it's that bad. <laughs> okay, so maybe I'm not helping myself by saying this, but I'm trying to find. All you uh, need is love. So clearly, yeah. it's not not singing to your to your future future partner then. Yeah, yeah, a wolf. Yes. <laughs> uh, All right. I guess I've. Uh, I have one minute to convince my future partner, as you say, that I'm not that bad. Uh, maybe we should. Uh, right uh, yeah, maybe maybe uh, it's still a debate, so it's okay if you're still competitive. Oh, it's a debate. Yeah. I forgot. Debate. I thought it was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there was a chat line to try and find uh, find love again okay let me have my minute of conclusion 